Yes, hello. You're watching the Sunday politics for Yorkshire, Lincolnshire and the North Midlands. And we start today with a warning. Today, you're going to be hearing the F word. That's fracking. Find out why these protesters have set up camp, even though we are told there are no plans to drill for shale gas at this particular site. And later, we'll find out why some voters will soon be getting the chance to elect the people who run our national parks. Let's say hello to our guests today, who are Julian Smith, Conservative MP for Skipton and Ripon, and Toby Perkins, the Labour MP for Chesterfield. Hello to you both. Let's get your initial thoughts, first of all, on fracking. Julian Smith. Well, I think it's great that this government has got behind fracking, part of a package of measures to lower your viewers' energy bills, the energy bills of businesses, and to make sure, along with cutting the green taxes, making more co competition in the energy sector, and uh, a whole host of other measures ensuring that people pay less for their energy, and fracking is a key part of that. So it's all about cutting energy bills, Toby Perkins? Well, I mean, I think government's policy has been uh, all about focusing on anything other than uh, asking the big energy companies to cut their profits, of course. Um, I think that there is uh, a role for fracking to be investigated, but I think that the first thing we have to do is, um, if there's going to be long-term uh, confidence in fracking, we need to, to get people on side. And the, the rush to do this from an economic perspective without really convincing people on the environmental aspects is why I think there is uh, a, a lot of concern about something the government needs to get the policy right because it does have potential for for the UK energy market so is fracking the magic solution to our future energy needs or a high-risk gamble with our fragile environment Paul Murphy has been speaking to those on both sides of the debate this protest camp on a country lane in the East Yorkshire world's is now in its seventh week. The Crawberry Hill Protectors, as they call themselves, are drawn from all over the UK. A determined group here to highlight what they say is the threat of fracking. People moved into this area for its rural character and if they find the shale gas under there, what's going to be left is an industrial wasteland. We're losing complete control and land sovereignty in this country. We, we're losing all our rights. We're here to make a stand and say, no, enough is enough. This industry has no social license here. This is the process they're worried about. Fracking involves drilling down and creating tiny explosions to shatter and crack hard shale rocks to release the gas inside. Water, sand and chemicals are injected into the rock at high pressure, which allows the gas to flow out to the head of the well. But there are concerns that harmful chemicals can sometimes escape and find their way into drinking water sources. Crucially though, there is no fracking at this site and the drilling company which operates here says it doesn't intend to frack, that it's more interested in conventional gas exploration. Yet still, the protests continue. If people repeat the same misinformation often enough, there's a risk that people might start to believe it. And in fact, at Crawberry Hill, it's an explicit condition of our planning application. We will not carry out fracking at this site. There is no fracking taking place in the UK at present, but the government wants that to change. In a visit to Lincolnshire earlier in the year, the Prime Minister made his feelings clear. Shale is important for our country. It could bring 74,000 jobs, over £3 billion of investment, give us cheaper energy for the future and increase our energy security. Large parts of the UK have already been opened up for energy exploration. The government is considering expanding this to potentially more than half of the UK. According to a recent parliamentary select committee report, there's a very real danger that after the next election, the lights will go off. We rely on importing gas from Russia, from Qatar in the Middle East, and because of events in the Crimea, in Syria and Iraq, that supply cannot be guaranteed. Therefore, the government is desperate to find new sources of cheap energy. And for these campaigners, that's a worry. Oil and gas exploration is an inherently risky business, and hydraulic fracturing is that taken to a desperate extreme. What the protectors are doing here is about protecting the water and the air and the land for everyone. At the heart of the debate about what's really going on here is a small paragraph in the drilling company's licence to operate. It's got permission for something called a mini fall-off test. Essentially, this is a way of establishing whether the rock beneath my feet is capable 
of being hydraulically fractured. The company insists that test is only to gather information, not to pave the way for fracking. We are an exploration company. Explorers explore. We have spent a great deal of time, resource and intellectual thought to, uh, to design these wells and take them to the depths that we think uh, will give us the maximum possible amount of information. It would be perverse in a way to walk away from part of this uh, untested just because of some semantic term that is being used. So you wanna live your own. There is no fracking here and the company says there will never be. But the protesters are staying put. They see this camp as the front line in a national campaign to raise serious questions about this government's energy policy. Well, joining us on this is Simon Bowen's Yorkshire and Humber campaigner for Friends of the Earth. Is the environmental lobby guilty of over-egging the potential risks from fracking? No, I don't think we are. I think we, what we've seen in, in the US where fracking has, has, has taken place is real kind of evidence of, of environmental problems be occurring through the industry. Things like groundwater contamination, people's drinking water being contaminated with, with methane, benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, really dangerous chemicals affecting the nervous system, affecting and, and carcinogenic chemicals also. So there is that real risk that, that fracking will not bring us cheaper energy bills, but it will bring us... In, in, but, but there's currently no fracking actually happening in the UK. And actually, the, the site there at Crawberry Hill, you saw on Paul Murphy's report, the company, the energy company there, says it has no plans to frack. So why are those campaigners targeting that site? The tests themselves bring, bring significant environmental risks. But the companies specifically say in their documents to the Environment Agency that they are looking to, to, for the viability to frack at a later date. Julian Smith, after hearing what Simon Bones has just said, is fracking really worth the risk? I'm pretty shocked by Simon's scaremongering. Um, this whole process will go through uh, environmental assessments, planning assessments, and it will be overseen, each proposal will be overseen by the health and safety executive. Britain has a long track record of uh, looking at oil and gas projects. We're one of the leading nations in the world and it is just not true to say that these proposals, these applications, won't be looked at and scrutinised at the highest level to ensure that they meet the top levels of environmental and safety protection. Toby Perkins, why is, why is Labour trying to block so many of the government's proposals in offering incentives to energy companies on shale gas when we are told it will ultimately mean cheaper energy bills. I think what we've seen in America is it has led to uh, significantly lower bills. But I think that to have a, a policy where you haven't dealt with the environmental concerns that we, two years ago, we were calling for the government to only use chemicals that had already been proved, or, or uh, exploration companies only to use chemicals that already been proven to be safe. Uh, they have now adopted that, but we've had to drag them kicking and screaming uh, on the environmental concerns. And because the government are looking at it purely in the econ economics of it, rather than allaying people's environmental concerns, giving some confidence that they are um, recognising those environmental uh, reservations, that's why you're seeing protesters around the, the country saying we don't want anywhere near us. So I, think, I think it is being totally mishandled, and potentially an important opportunity could be missed here. So, what's the alternative, Simon Bowens? I mean, we carry on playing paying a ridiculously high price for gas and we're reliant on Putin and his regime in Russia. And let, let's, let's, let's not knock this, this idea about cheaper energy bills on the heads for a starter. All the evidence is, is pointing. Actually, the, the, the American market is completely different to the, to the European energy market. It will not deliver that kind of scale of energy price cuts in, 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 in Europe. The, the regulatory regime, which, which you're talking about, Toby, we're already seeing significant weaknesses in, in, in that regime. Things falling between the cracks between the, regulatory, between the regulatory authorities, impact assessments not being done thoroughly enough, um, conditions which are, which are attached to licenses and planning permission not being Simon, stuck to is, the, and enforced. This is again just um, presenting a false picture. This is part of a mix of measures, nuclear, more gas stations, uh, 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 fracking, to actually ensure that Britain is more self-sufficient in energy and that we get lower prices for the viewers of this programme, which is the priority at the moment of this government, to make sure that the energy costs come down. Well, the truth is that you, you say you want to bring energy prices down. When we 
I uh, said nine months ago, the energy companies ought to be freezing their prices and we ought to relook at the way that they operate. You guys were saying, oh, we, you know, we can't expect them to do that. And yet within six months, they were doing it. But Surely there's got to be some pressure on the big so six too. So what we've seen there? with the price freeze proposals is that, in fact, that will lead to a distortion in prices, which will probably lead to higher prices Nonsense. before and Nonsense. after the freeze is there. And I think we want to trust the market, but ensure there's higher competition and more sources of but cheaper energy. you trust the market, but everyone can see it's not working for consumers. Well, I think it's beginning to work, and certainly it's beginning to work because Miliband put pressure on them, and then they caved in. Top That's down Marxist-style price fixing is not going to be the answer. Julian, you, you, me you mentioned green taxes in, 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 in your opening piece. What's really significant is actually the best way to, to provide energy security is actually to become more energy efficient. So I, I'd be questioning why you kind of label green taxes in looking at the energy company obligation, which was the only. Um, and energy, energy efficiency measure that was actually working, why that was cut by before Christmas after, after the big six energy well, companies as you know, were lobbying so, we, and as, to as do so. As you well know, we are committed to uh, renewable energy and all the renewable energy targets that this country has uh, made and commitments it has made. But what we have said is that, that high energy costs on consumers watching this programme have to be reduced, and that's a priority. Uh, Simon, just, just briefly on this, if it is proved that, that shale gas does reduce bills and fracking is by and large safe, will you admit and your environmentalist friends admit you were wrong? We are a long, long way from actually showing that, that, that fracking is safe. And the United Nations itself has, has said that even if you have the toughest regulatory regime in, 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 in the world, you will still have significant environmental risks from fracking. I mean, that, I mean, that, is, that has got to be factored in, in, into people's concern about why they're resisting fracking. There's People's a system in place as a framework to protect people. And it's, and it's dodgy already, and it's going to be increasingly <laughs> You're dodgy. saying the health and safety executive is dodgy? Sorry, Simon, is the I'm, Friends of the Earth I'm saying that? I'm saying that there are significant weaknesses in the regulatory system for fracking at the moment, and it will continue to, do, to be so when, when, when I, the environment... I'm sure this is a subject we will come back to, but we're going to have to leave this particular debate there for now. Simon Bowens, thanks for your time today.